having his way. And as I say that, Schwabler tries to mount some sort of an assault here, and he says, I want no part of that. Well, watching them in the corner, Schwalger immediately going to the left hook, and his corner did call for the left hook, and he found some success with it early. So Chong is just going to need to be aware of it, because Schwalger does have a bit of sting in his punches. But he's also got to set it up well. He can't just go for it straight away because uh, Chong Ni should pick. Uh, Chong Ni is, uh, I mean, if he comes with an uppercut, and, and as I say that, it's Schwab that comes with the uppercut, but the uppercut is there for Chong Ni. The right hand is really there. Look at the way he walks in, what I call the kill zone, Mike, and he's got his left hand down. He's wide open for right hand power shot, which will flatten him if Chong Ni uh, nails him properly. Watch him come in. He enters the kill zone, not throwing any punches. Well, that time, Ni jabbed him off, so he couldn't do anything. But when he comes in himself and he's got his head down, he's not throwing punches, he's tailor made for right hand shot. Now, there's the uppercut and the right hand, and that's what I'm talking about. I'd just like to see Chong Ni just on occasion when he, when he uh, starts to lean in like that, just shuffle back slightly, throw the uppercut, throw the right hand just to intercept him and double, double the impact. Right now, instead of boxing his way in, he just wants to land power shots, which is not really necessary. I mean, he can outbox this guy from the awkward style that he has and make uh, Schwagler look bad and get him in an awkward position and then throw the power shot. But he's throwing almost everything, you know, with the, the determination of, I want to knock him out with his shot if I can. And he really doesn't need to do that. He's making it more difficult than it really is. But he's a showy sort of guy. He wants to put the guy's lights out. Good head movement, just ducking under the left hook there again. Schwalger, if he's going to throw the left hook, he really needs to set it up with maybe a fake right hand or throw it off the jab rather than just the one-off shot. Chong Ni waits. He's trying to invite Schwalger to come in so he can time the right hand. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to say, come on, come on, come into me, come into me. Let me just blast you with this right hand. This good head movement from Chong Ni. Very, very classy fighter to watch. Entertaining fighter. Yeah, I, I'm entertained by him. I think he's a very, very entertaining fighter. And see, there's a method to his madness. He's not just waiting. He's not hesitating. You know, see, now he decides to open it up and he attacks the guy. Oh, blasting shots! And that's it! What's this? There is no standing eight count, but of course the referee doesn't know that. So he gives him a standing eight count. And uh, that has to be scored as a knockdown. So it's a minimum of a 10-9 uh, round. But somebody ought to tell uh, Eddie that there is no standing eight count here in New Zealand. I thought he was stopping the fight. Well, a little disappointing there. Really, the fighter needs to take a knee if, a, if an eight count's going to be issued. Otherwise, well, the referee... There is no eight count. There is no eight count. It, uh, that's not a rule here. There's no standing eight count, and he just gave him an amateur standing eight count, and that's wrong. He should have he should have stopped the fight. Anyway, because of that, Schwagler survives the third round. Well, Schwagler looking bloodied in the corner, and here we're about to see Rai. Nice uppercut, flipping it over top with the right hand. Chong Ni, again, step right hand, just drifting back and drawing Schwagler into it. And there we saw him go to work, which led to the uh, interesting decision to call an eight count. The referee, really, when he intervenes like that, needs to stop the fight under these rules. saying before if the fighter chooses to take a knee you can start to count him it's not necessarily an eight count and that's what the fighter should do is take the knee all right it's all academic because we're in the fourth round and this is the final round and he has won every round he won the first round 10-9 the second round 10-9 and on my scorecard because of the so-called standing eight count he got a 10-8 round which had to score that as a knockdown nice. so we're in the fourth round go ahead Mike. nice little, nice little sharp uppercut there just exposing the gaps and Schwager's armory I think Schwager's being heard here and now I assume he stopped the fight but he hasn't waved it off all right, yes, the fight is stopped. Okay. The fight's all over, and okay. Chong Ni is the winner. It's all over. But again, what the referee should have done is walk the fighter off and then put his hands up in the air and waved it off to indicate to the crowd intended that, yes, the fight's over. 
Premiership tonight. A very, very good win and a complete display from Rico Chong Ni. I'm impressed with Chong Ni. It'll be scored as a fourth round technical knockout victory as uh, the referee stops the fight, and, and rightly so. I mean, what uh, referee Eddie uh, Manuela did was proper. I just would like to see him indicate so that we can make the immediate call to the uh, people watching on television and the crowd in attendance would know. And also, I understand what he was thinking with the standing eight count, but again, you can't make it up as you go along. That's the way it is. And, and this uh, rules of the New Zealand uh, Athletic Commission, there is no standing eight count, and he gave one. Couldn't agree more. It's a professional game, and you need clarity and definition from... from